Welcome to part two of building Herbie from the Fantastic Four in real life. In the last part, we designed all of Herbie's systems and assembled his entire body. In this part, we're going to be going over all of the cool features that we outlined in part one. However, I do want to tell you guys some changes I did make to Herbie since you last saw him. Most importantly, how he's going to move around my garage. So since watching the Fantastic Four movie, it's clear that Herbie moves around with a little ball at the bottom of his body. Now, this isn't very practical for what I want to use him for because I want him to be a garage assistant and I want him to be super mobile. And that ball design really doesn't work because we do see it being utilized in real life in the Disney parks. However, that version of Herbie is actually being controlled by five separate people behind the scenes. Now, for my use case, I want Herbie to be fully autonomous. So that doesn't really work out for me. And that's why I went with the four wheel design, just because it's so much more reliable and it's been proven in the past to work time and time again. So last you guys saw, Herbie had these massive red wheels, but after testing them and letting Herbie walk around my garage for a bit, I realized that they were just way too heavy for what I wanted him to do. And he just required way too much power to move around. So of course I went through the process any engineer goes through and it's just, again, trial and error. So I tested out these white Lego wheels um, and I thought they would be pretty good as they matched Herbie's aesthetic. However, they were just way too weak and most notably way too thin. So whenever Herbie's body weight would be applied to the wheels, the threads would just come right off of the rims. So I went with another design, these yellow wheels, and they were thick enough to support Herbie's weight. However, the diameter wasn't big enough. So they were just way too small for Herbie's body and to actually allow him to move. Finally, I did a Thanos and decided to do it myself. So I came up with my own design and measured the wheels perfectly and just 3D printed them on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. And for the threads, I decided to use uh, the flexible material TPU. For those of you who don't know, super long chemistry word for thermoplastic urethane. It doesn't really matter. All we need to know is that it's flexible and it has a little bit of grip so that Herbie can actually move around the garage. Okay, so with that out the way, let's get into the features. So to re-outline the features we need for Herbie, we need a flame at the top of his head, an OLED screen in his chest, the ability to put out fires, and the ability to hold tools. Okay, so for those of you who have seen this video, you would know that we're gonna be using Nichrome to create a flame inside of Herbie's head. I decided to opt out of this idea because I was thinking it's not very practical to have a flame stationary inside of Herbie's head. That means whatever I need to use the flame for can only be done above of Herbie. So I wanted the flame to be removable. That's where this comes in, a lighter. I developed this linear rail mechanism so that I'd have a lighter super glued or not super glued. I'd have it uh, held in place by a magnet on top of this linear actuator. And then whenever this servo is activated, as you can see, it just pushes it right up. And then I'll have this lighter here attached by a magnet. So then I can just remove it, do my thing with the lighter, come back and then put it back in and it'll just uh, deploy downward just like that. I feel like this is just way more convenient because I can use the lighter around my lab to do whatever I need to do, like warp a piece of plastic or use it to heat shrink a circuit. Moving on, the taser. So for the taser, I'm gonna use a boost converter to create an arc between two wires. Super simple, power, boost converter, and arc. Now Herbie can terrorize me while I work. Gosh. And now the fun part, the projector. I got this super cheap projector from a very questionable website and I made sure that it was able to fit within Herbie's head. Now, how am I going to voice activate the projector, you ask? Good question. I'm not. This guy has a bunch of random buttons on it, and to do that, I'd have to break into this and somehow wire up my voice recognition system to the board on the projector, and just a bunch of work. So, what's the plan for this? This projector comes with a remote, and I'm thinking that if I can just get a servo to press this power button, just glue a servo right here, and then voice activate the servo to then go off when I say, Herbie, turn on the projector. The servo activates, presses the button, projector turns on, and then bang, I can control the projector via this remote. It would just be so much more work than if I could just turn it on with my voice and then control it with this. It's also much more reliable to control it with a remote as opposed to controlling the entire thing with your voice. So that solves the voice recognition problem for the projector. Okay, so we're here testing Herbie's projector. Um, oh, would you look at that? Next is the screen on Herbie's chest. So for those of you who remember in part one, I said I wanted Herbie to have a four on his chest and also just to display whatever other images I wanted him to display. So for this, we're gonna use an OLED screen. For those of you who have no idea what an OLED screen is, me neither. Basically, I want the OLED screen to toggle between two images, the Fantastic Four logo and my personal logo. I'm doing this because simply, I'm not a part of the Fantastic Four and I don't just throw the things out that I build or put them in a storage cabinet. I actually use the things I build and I want Herbie to be an assistant after this video is done. I want to use them every day and where I can to help me build projects. So I just feel like it would be better if he has the ability to display my logo while he's working in the garage. 
Because when him and I are alone, the four really means nothing to me and I want it to mean something. So I feel like having my last name on Herbie would really add a sense of familiarity and it would help him fit within my lab a bit better. But for the sake of this video and just so that people can recognize that he's from the Fantastic Four, I'll add the Fantastic Four logo just for this. As I mentioned in the last part, I wanted Herbie to hold things using magnets as most of the tools I use in my garage are metal, like screwdrivers, pliers, etc. So I just gave him these cylinder magnets that pop into the center of his hand and that should work perfectly. So probably my favorite feature of Herbie is the fire extinguisher. The way his fire extinguishing system works is with this infrared sensor. So once a flame is put in front of this sensor, it sends a signal to this motor controller board, which then tells a submersible water pump to just pump water until the flame is gone. So I added two holes in the front of Herbie, one for the nozzle for the water to shoot out and then one for the sensor to actually pick up the fire. Now, all that's left is to test it out. So everything's installed here. This is the sensor, the black part, right here's the nozzle for the water. Flame, the power. Yo! I just got my desk all wet and my pants. I was not expecting it to go all the way up. I mean, I guess it's a good thing. It shows good pressure, water pressure, but. Damn, wait. Dang, okay, it gets really messy, but it just looks like Herbie's peeing everywhere, which is kind of funny. But it literally does what we want it to do, which is put out fires. See? And now everything's wet. Okay, so I'm gonna be running a very questionable test. Herbie, put out the fire. Herbie? 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 Wow, I would be dead right now. I would actually be dead. Okay, that's kind of getting big. Ow. So I forgot to plug in power last time, and now that we have that fixed, uh, it's just really amazing to see Herbie put out the flame. It really is just fantastic. So that about does it for this episode of building Herbie from the Fantastic Four in real life. In the next part, I want to bring all the features that we installed today to life. So that means programming everything to be recognized by my voice and making sure that Herbie can move around my garage fully on his own. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave your thoughts down below on what you think about Herbie. I really value what you guys have to say. Of course, I'll see you in the next one and keep building. Subscribe for more engineering content.